ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਦੇ ਵਾਸ਼ਿੰਗਟਨ ਡੀਸੀ ਵਿਖੇ ਅਮਰੀਕੀ ਕਾਂਗਰਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਜ਼ੁਰਮ ਦੇ ਸ਼ਿਕਾਰ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਲਈ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਸੀ ਕੋਕਸ ਦੇ ਸੱਦੇ ਤੇ ਵੱਖ-ਵੱਖ ਧਰਮਾਂ ਦੇ ਨੁਮਾਇੰਦਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਸਮਾਗਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਸ਼ਮੂਲੀਅਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਇਹ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਸਮਾਗਮ ਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਜੂਨ 84 ਕਲੂਕਾਰੇ ਦੀ 40ਵੀਂ ਬਰਸੀ ਨੂੰ ਮੁੱਖ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਕਰਵਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੌਰਾਨ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਸਮੇਤ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨਾਂ ਅਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਘੱਟ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਕੌਮਾਂ ਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਜ਼ੁਰਮ ਤੇ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਵਟਾਂਦਰੇ ਕੀਤੇ ਗਏ ਇਸ ਮੌਕੇ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਰਿਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਵਰਗੇ ਮੁੱਦਿਆਂ ਤੇ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਬੁਲੰਦ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲੀ ਕਾਂਗਰਸ ਵੂਮਨ ਕੈਥਰੀਨ ਕਲਾਰਕ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਤੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਅਤੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੀ ਭਾਰਤ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਕੀਤੇ ਹਮਲੇ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਬੋਲੇ As we mark 40 years since the atrocious assault on the Golden Temple We are making clear that Congress's support of this community remains unwavering and bipartisan. The American experiment is built on a premise of religious freedom. And some of our darkest chapters were written when we strayed from that foundation. And some of our greatest triumphs were forged when we marched closer to fully realizing it. but that project is still incomplete the forces of religious oppression are as brazen as ever the enemies of religious freedom are no longer constrained by national borders the campaign to silence and terrorize this community is not a regional problem these assaults on political opposition are not contained to any one country This is a global threat. And as we have so painfully learned, that threat exists here on American soil. So it will take courage to stand up to that kind of repression. It takes unimaginable resilience to carry on the fight that you have all fought for so many years. So I want to thank you and on behalf of the Democratic Caucus, thank you. for speaking out. Thank you for mobilizing and organizing. History is with you. We are with you. I am proud to be your partner in building a kinder and repression-free future. When I first came to Congress, I quickly realized that many of my colleagues did not understand the Sikh community or the challenges that Sikh Americans faced. Even years after 9/11, many Sikhs across America were facing bullying and even racially motivated violence. That is why in 2013, I decided to establish the bipartisan American Sikh Congressional Caucus along with my Republican colleague Representative David Valadeo. We founded this caucus to give Sikh Americans a voice in Congress to ensure that our nation could understand the beauty of the Sikh religion and to celebrate the great accomplishments of Sikh Americans including Congressman Dilip Singh Sound who was the first Asian Indian and Sikh American to ever serve in Congress. And yes, um you are right there was resistance from some yes. to forming this caucus. but we did prevail and the fact that you are all here today continuing to raise your voices shows how important it was to make sure that this caucus remains uh intact and active so it tells it, you know what we see is that people are learning more about the great Sikh traditions and in fact now there's an annual langar and uh there is uh a uh pride to, for us to see that there are Sikh American events taking place right here in the US Capitol more than 10 years after this caucus was founded we know that this topic is very timely violence has always been with us it continues to spike around the world and results in growing pain and suffering of innocent people and in this context we also see the chart of the united nations human rights and international humanitarian law at the 1948 convention on the prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide being blatantly disregarded so i cannot hide my deepest concern ladies and gentlemen i cannot but tell you how many sleepless nights i spend when i see all these rights and dignity being stepped on every single day in front of our eyes and of course i do understand that the capacity for impunity 
is built on what happened in the past for which people were not held accountable. So today we see it in the press, we see it in TV, we see it in social media, and the world is really drifting in, so is humanity. Stand in solidarity with the Sikh community and um, the, the 40th anniversary of the experience of the Sikh community in genocide. So thank you very much for the privilege of being here with you and sharing this day with you. Um, I hold that very close and dear to my heart, so uh, great appreciation for that. Um, we stand here unified by a shared purpose, to honor survivors of violence and to stand in solidarity with those who tirelessly work on the front lines of conflict and peacemaking. Our world today faces an unprecedented challenge and we all see it, we all feel the weight of that and oftentimes we feel um, overwhelmed by what that means for our current situation, the situation of our loved ones, our family, our friends, um, and how these things might transcend and move forward. From wars and conflicts to the rise of intolerance and hate, creating and deepening identity conflict fault lines by interchangeably using faith, religion, ethnicity, and gender as a means to deepen conflict and to violence within our communities, countries, across regions, within our own families, oftentimes from Burma, where we have dear friends from Burma here with us today, uh, to Yemen, Israel, Palestine, Sudan, to the United States. The need for peace is more pressing than ever. And I think we all feel that in our shoulders today. I think we all flounder a bit on what that might look like. Um, despite these challenges, we find hope and inspiration in the resilience and determination of those who have endured unimaginable hardships and strive for peace, as is the case of dear friends here today from Burma um, that are Sai and kind that are actually staying with us. Is calling people other when they're not. And these ingredients of per persecution are also there by authoritarian leadership, economic burdens or concerns, and acquiring more physical materialistic wealth. And as these ingredients continue to percolate in the world, spiritually our, our forefathers, really our gurus, understood what the antidote was. And that symbolically exists not only on today, but the buildings which were attacked during the genocide and what they symbolically understood for and they stand for. The Darbar Sahib complex, which is also known uh, to the other world as the Golden Temple, for us is the Harimandar Sahib, has the central building within the Akal Takht, which is the, the supreme throne and seat of the Sikh political and spiritual empire. But if you look into the design and architecture, our, our thought process and philosophy is, is percolated to any, every brick of that structure. The, the structure was created at a lower level than the city at, of limits to highlight the aspect of humility, that may we all be hum humble. Anybody that enters through the four doors for all castes, creed, culture, color, no matter your religious denomination, you are walking through those doors and experiencing that humility and connection. Um, the, the house of worship there, which is the, the, the Darbar Sahib, is created on a nectar of pool of water, and it signifies the lotus flower, which in many other faiths and communities, um, it lives in the world of materialistic wealth and all the negative aspects of the world, but it's yet flourishing because it's connected and deep-rooted to the, the divine power that exists. Uh, let me remind you about Rohingya genocide that been taking place. It's take, it started in uh, about 1978, um, and now I'm going to turn next one 30 years old. So you can imagine that the genocide been taking place since then and still continue. Uh, at the age of five, I was forced to leave my country, cross the borders illegally and um, seek refuge in Malaysia for 21 years where I live a uh, very <laughs> discriminative uh, refugee life. It's not easy. And um, often we see that uh, issues in Burma are not getting better. Um, when I see my people until today being trafficked, being abused, uh, it's, I can relate how Brother Ravi was 
talking about the trauma and the trauma never go away. And when he say that trauma does transfer, like, you know, get into the DNA, I thought about my kids. I don't want them to feel the pain that I had. Um, it's not nice. Um, yes, it is true. Every day when we see the news or get a call from our relatives, we relieve all the pain all over again. It is really, really real. With that, uh, starting, uh, the world started, uh, heard about Rohingya in 2012, 2015, and 17, where the huge numbers of Rohingya fled from the, uh, our, my land, um, Arakan, where I was born and cross the borders to Bangladesh, which make more than 1.1 million refugees are living in, in the Bangladesh. 